This is for educational use only. Our instructor, Mr. Rolton Ardines, is allowing our group to use this an educational material. These are the objectives of our presentation. At the end of this, the students will be able to explain the importance of market integration and globalization, explain the history of global market integration, explain the benefits of market integration in economy, explain globalization of production and globalization of markets, explain the role of international financial institution in the creation of global economy, narrate a short history of global market integration in the 20th century. Identify the attributes of global corporations. Explain Breton Woods system. Market integration occurs when prices among different locations or related goods follow similar patterns over a long period of time. Groups of goods often move proportionally to each other and when its relation is very clear among different markets, it is said that the markets are integrated. What is the importance of market integration? In globalization, market integration is an agreement between countries that aims to reduce costs for both producers and consumers by eliminating barriers to the free flow of goods and services, allowing the members countries to share a common market while harmonizing their fiscal policies. Market integration should increase financial and economic efficiency and lead to a higher economic growth. However, market integration may increase asset return volatility and cause financial stability and contagion effects. Now, the advantages in, of consumers are more innovation, creativity, and engagement at every level of society, and also lower the prices, increase consumptions, additional job opportunities around the world. Now, the producers are increased choice and quality of good of each country specialized in its own industries, and increased competition and productivity as firms face more rivals and incentives to innovate. Also, economies of scale as firms can produce larger quantities at lower cost. Market integration should increase financial and economic efficiency and lead to a higher economic growth. However, market integration may increase asset return volatility and cause financial stability and contagion effects. Next is the four global strategies. One is the export. Export is a country who sells their products, service to other countries. Also, exporting can increase sales and profits if they reach new markets and they may even present an opportunity to capture significant global market share. Next is standardization. The process of designing things according to a set of good international standards. Global standardization is a marketing approach that uses standard marketing strategies to promote products internationally. It is ability for a company or business to use the same marketing strategy from one country to the next and across the various culture and third is the multi-domestic um, set of strategies used by companies that operate in more than one country at a time also domestic company whose operation in different countries are managed to stand alone basis without any serious attempt to integrate them. Last is the transnational. It refers to multiple links, interactions, linking people and institutions across the borders of nation states. A company whose operations in different countries are managed and stand alone basis without any serious attempt to integrate them also. History of Global Market Integration First, Agricultural Revolution and Industrial Revolution Second is capitalism and socialism. Third, the information revolution. So now, the agricultural revolution and industrial revolution. It was the first big economic change and when people learned how to domesticate plants, animals, they realized that it was much more productive than hunter-gatherer societies. Industrial revolution. It was the second major economic revolution in the 1800s and with the rise of industry came new economic tools, factories are popping up and change how work functioned. Instead of working at home, people began working as wage laborers and then becoming more specialized in their skills. Thus, productivity went up, standards of living rose, and the people had access to wider variety of goods due to mass production. Capitalism 
and socialism. There were two competing economic models that sprang around the time of industrial revolution as economic capital became more and more important to production of goods the capitalism and socialism capitalism a system in which all natural resources and means of production are privately owned also it emphasizes profit maximization and competition as the main drivers of efficiency Socialism As the government plays an even larger role in socialism and the means of production are under collective ownership. Property is owned by the government and allocated to all citizens, not only those without money to afford it. Information Revolution As the computers and other technologies are beginning to replace many jobs because of automation, or outsourcing jobs offshore and development of technologies in second half of 20th century. What are the benefits of the market integration in the economy? Market integration is the process of reducing barriers to a trade increasing the flow of goods, service, capital, and um, labor across the national borders. Market integration can have, have uh, various benefits for the economy such as progress in trade, market integration can increase the variety and quality of goods and services available to the consumers and the producers, as well as a lower price due to increased competition and efficiency. Ease of Agreement Market integration can facilitate the coordination and cooperation among the countries of various issues such as trade policies, environmental standards, labor, Right intellectual and property rights. Improved political cooperation market integration can strengthen the political ties and influence the country that are part of the um, global bloc such as European Union or Association of Southeast Asian Nations. Opportunities of employment markets um, can integrate can create uh, more jobs and income for workers by increasing the demand for labor, labor and skills across countries. Beneficial financial markets Market integration can improve the efficiency and stability of financial markets by increasing the ability and diversity of financial products and services. Increase in the foreign di direct investment Market integration can attract more foreign direct investment FDI by creating um, a larger, more integrated market and cause of the higher returns. However, market integration can also come with uh, some challenges and drawbacks such as um, law of sovereignty. Market integration can limit the autonomy and politic policy space um, by, by acquiring um, comply with uh, common rules and regulation that may not suit the specific needs or preference. Unequal distribution. Unequal distribution can interrogate and create winners and losers among the countries, regions, six, six stars, sectors and groups within a market um, depending on their comparative advantage, competitiveness and bargaining power. Environmental Degradation Market integration um, can increase the env environmental impact of the economic activities. Globalization of production and globalization of markets Globalization of production refers to the process by which companies source materials, components, and labor from various locations around the world to optimize their manufacturing processes and reduce costs. This often involves setting up supply chains and production facilities in multiple countries to take advantage of specialized skills, lower labor costs, and access to raw materials. On the other hand, globalization of markets involves the expansion of companies' products or services into international market to reach a broader customer base. This typically entails adapting products and marketing strategies to suit the cultural and economic preferences of different regions aiming to create a global pref 
presents an increased sales and market share across borders. Both concepts are integral aspects of modern global business strategies, allowing companies to tap into diverse resources of markets for competitiveness and growth. For instance, an American tech company might design its products in Silicon Valley but assemble them in China to take advantage of lower labor costs. On the other hand, globalization of markets refers to the process by which business expand their customer base internationally by marketing and selling their products or service globally. For instance, fast food chains like McDonald's adapt their menus to local taste in various countries while maintaining a global brand identity appealing to diverse markets. Both globalization of production and globalization of markets are integral components of the modern interconnected global economy. Globalization of production and globalization of markets offer several benefits. The globalization of production allows companies to access cost-effective resources and labor from various parts of the world, leading to cost-saving and improved efficiency. This can result in more competitive price for consumers. On the other hand, the globalization of markets provide companies with access to a larger customer base enabling them to scale their business and increase profitability. Additionally, it encourages innovation and competition which can lead to better products and service. Overall, these dual aspects of globalization foster economic growth, create opportunities for business and individuals and drive international cooperation and understanding. The international financial institution plays a significant role in the creation of stability of the economy and here are some key ways in which IFI contributed in the creation of global economy. First, economic development and poverty reduction. The IFI provides resources like financial resources that helps them assist countries, especially when it comes to poverty reduction, education, and more. 2. Financial Stability The IFI also provides financial support and also helps to assist in promoting balance and sustainable economic growth. Third, trade facilitation. They help reduce trade barriers and promote international trades that helps to increase economic independence and cooperation. Fourth, investment promotion. The IFI also provides financial and technical expertise that helps to provide entrepreneurship and stimulates economic growth and more. Fifth, policy coordination. IFI encourages policy coordination among members of the countries to align national policies that also has broadened global economic objectives that reduces imbalanced economic and fast foster cooperation between nations. Sixth, development of financial markets. They also support to, de to the development of an efficient and robust financial sectors on some other developing countries. They provide technical assistance that also help strengthen regulatory frameworks and etc. And the last one is the seventh, capacity building and knowledge sharing. IFI gives or offers technical assistance, training and the knowledge resources to any member countries that enables or helps them or helps the country to make informed policy decision, improve governance and manage risk 
effectively. I am here to narrate a short history of global market integration in the 20th century. So, let's begin. The 20th century witnessed a significant evolution in global market integration, beginning with the colonial dominance of imperial powers, the world experienced a retreat from globalization during interwar period due to protectionist measures. However, the establishment of the Bretton Woods system in 1944 and subsequent agreements like GATT promoted international trade. The rise of multinational corporations fueled by post-war prosperity played a pivotal role in global economic integration. The digital revolution in the latter half of the century further accelerated this trend. The collapse of the Bretton Woods system in 1971 led to the adoption of floating exchange rates, while the formation of World Trade Organization, which is the WTO, in 1995 aimed to regulate and liberalize international trade. China's economic opening in the late 20th century dramatically impacted global markets and the 21st century has brought both opportunities and challenges including concerns about inequality and environmental sustainability. In summary, the 20th century marked a transformative period in global market integration driven by political economic and technological forces laying the foundation for the interconnected world economy we see today. Hey guys, so I am going to be tackling about um, the attributes of global corporation, but let's just uh, first deep dive in on what it, what exactly is a global corporation. So a global corporation is also known as a global company. So global companies does business around the world. So it technically means that these are major businesses that is um, revolving around the world. So one great example of this one is Coca-Cola. So we all know that Coca-Cola is a beverage company. And most of uh, the other companies, they started out small and then they um, eventually grew up to be, a, uh, to be a global corporation, which is very good because it has actually amazing benefits um, throughout the world. So also it does business around the world. So it's not only in the United States, it's also within other parts of the world. Now for global corporation, there are some very good attributes or benefits with that came along with it. So let's start with, you can increase your customer base. So with that being said, um, a global corporation can expand their customers throughout the world because they can also um, cater other nationalities, other ethnic ethnicities, something like that. Next is you can reduce your operating costs. So if a certain country has low operational costs, then you can likely reduce your operating costs on that other country. So it will save you a lot of money um, in the long run, okay? And third is you don't need to be bogged down by seasonality. So what does this mean? So um, there are times where a product is not really that beneficial by, by that certain season, but with the means of global corporation, you can actually, um, you don't have to worry about seasonality because it means that your product is versatile and it can withstand other seasons as well. Third, uh, fourth is you can boost the growth rate of your company. So more employees means more money and it will eventually grow within your company. 
And last but not the least is you can create new jobs. So with that being said, um, um, open opportunities has been um, emerging. More employees means you can grow your company along with them. No, with the help of employees or um, manual labor, you can actually go ahead and expand your company to a much more bigger one. And it could also create people newer jobs. And with newer jobs means um, your economy of a certain country will boost as well. So these are the key points of return wood system. First, it was an international monetary agreement that standardized currency exchange rate. Second, it is, the it is a financial framework. Third, it was created because of World War II damages and then in order to help the world to get back on their feet. Fourth, it was created since some of the countries are afraid that they might devalue their currency to boost exports for faster development of their country. Fifth, 44 nations held a conference at the scheduled Mount Washington Hotel in Bretton Woods, New Hampshire, to participate in the became known as the Bretton Woods Conference, where 29 nations signed its articles of agreement. And lastly, this was the time two institutions were created, and these are the IMF and the World Bank or International Bank. So to elaborate more, the Bretton Woods system was a global monetary and financial framework that was established after the World War II to promote international economic stability and prevent the competitive devaluations and protectionist policies that had contributed to the Great Depression and global economic instability in the 1930s. The system was created or was established during the conference held in Bretton Woods, New Hampshire, USA in July 1944. Representatives from 44 allied nations attended the conference to design a new international monetary order. And because of this, the main outcomes of the conference were the creation of two key institutions. And these are the International Monetary Fund or the IMF and the World Bank or the International Bank. So let's talk about first the International Monetary Fund or the IMF. So the IMF was established or was created to oversee the international monetary system, facilitate exchange rate stability, provide short-term financial assistance to the countries facing balance of pro payments problems, and promote global economic cooperation. Member con countries contributed funds to the IMF based on their economic size, and these funds could be drawn upon by countries facing difficulties. So second, the World Bank or the International Bank for Reconstruction and Development or IBRD. The World Bank was created to provide financial and technical assistance to the war-torn and developing countries for reconstruction like and development pro projects rather. And it aimed to promote long-term economic development and reduce poverty. So by offering loans and grants for projects like infra infrastructures or agricultures and uh, education and etc. These are the include key features of the Brinton Wood system. Fixed exchange rate, gold convertibility, adjustable pig, and capital control. Fixed exchange rate member countries agreed to pick their currency to the US dollars which was in turn to peg to gold. This created a fixed exchange rate system where currency had defined values related to each other. The gold convertibility. The US dollar was convertibility to gold at a fixed rate. This means that other member countries could exchange their US dollars holding for gold if they wishes to do so. Adjustable peak. While currency were paid to the US dollar, countries could adjust their exchange rate within a certain margin if they face fundamental imbalances in their economies. Capital control. Country had the ability to impose capital control to regulate the flow of funds across their borders 
and prevent speculative attacks at their currencies. But despite of the Britain Wood system came to an end of the due confluence of economic and geopolitical factors. One of the fundamental issues was in the presence rate in balances among member countries. The United States as the limp chain of the system faced recurring trade defects, which leads to the continuous outflow of its gold reserve. Speculative pressure on the US dollar intensified as a doubt grew about the government ability to maintain the fixed exchange rate of $35 per ounce of gold. Furthermore, domestic economic exchange include inflation stemming from the cost of the Vietnam War and the expanding social program constrained as the U.S. capacity rectified these imbalances with the Britain Wood Framework. The critical juncture came in 1971, which President Richard Nixon announced the suspension of the dollars convertibly to gold, effectively dismantling the Princeton Wood system. This significant development, known as the Nixon shock, ushered in a new era of floating exchange rate and transformed the global monetary landscape. The dismissal of Brinton which leads to the emergence of the alternative international monetary mechanism, such as SDR. Market integration, which refers <coughs> to the process of connecting and harmonizing different regional or national markets into a single larger market can have several benefits, which means these benefits are often realized with trade barriers such as tariffs or regulatory differences are reduced or eliminated. Now, here are some of the key benefits of market integration. The economic efficiency, the increased trade, the consumer choice, the price stability, the technological transfer, the foreign investment, and also the diversification and risk reduction. Now, the meaning of the economic efficiency is the market integration promotes that efficient allocation of resources by allowing goods and services to flow freely across borders. This can lead to lower production costs, increased productivity, and improved resource allocation. Now, in increased trade, integration expands the potential customer base for businesses, encouraging trade growth. This can result in increased exports and imports, which can be beneficial for economic growth and job creation. Now, third is the consumer choice. It is integrated market offer consumers a wider variety of products and services at competitive prices. Consumers can access a broader range of goods and services from different regions, often at lower prices due to increased competition. Now, here in price stability, integration can help stabilize price by allowing for the movement of goods from areas with surpluses to regions with shortages. Mm -hmm. This helps prevent price spikes and shortages in the integrated market. And also in the technological transfer, market integration can facilitate the transfer of technology and knowledge across borders, <laughs> leading to innovation and improved productivity in less developed regions. Now in foreign investment, integrated markets can attack Foreign direct investment or the FDI as businesses seek to establish a presence in a larger, more accessible market, FDI bring capital, technology, and also the job opportunities to host country, countries. Now lastly, in diversification and risk reduction, is a business can diversify their customer base and reduce risk associated with economic downturns or political instability by accessing multiple markets. Here is the conclusion. Now, market integration is essential in globalization because it allows businesses to navigate the complexes of diverse markets, market informed decisions, and adapt their strategies to local context. It enables companies to seize opportunities, mitigate risk, and establish a strong global presence. The existence of one price in two markets indicates the degree of price, transmission, and the speed at which information travels between two markets. Well, integrated markets have very similar prices, the difference being just the cost of transportation of the commodity 
from one market to another.